Sago. Welcome to this month's safety video about keeping your child safe outdoors. Summer is a great season for spending time outside with our families. Since kids can quickly find trouble outdoors, let's take a look at some of the ways we can keep our kids safe. Designate an adult who will supervise the children. This is especially important during this challenging time with families working and teaching from home and still managing other tasks like laundry, cooking, and more. Be very clear when designating an adult who will supervise the kids both indoors and outdoors. Your deck might meet current building codes, but still pose a hazard to your child. Decorative cutouts or designs in your railing might make it easier for little climbers. Also, ensure all furniture and planters are placed far away from the edge of your deck, especially with elevated decks. Supervision is still very important since young children might move chairs. Consider a new railing, a railing guard, or plan ahead if you are designing a new deck. Not all contractors will be thinking about child safety with deck design. Inspect your deck, fence, and outdoor furniture. Check for protruding screws or other hardware. Avoid using glass furniture. Also, check the spaces between railings or handrails to ensure they are less than 4 inches to prevent entrapment. Railing guards can be installed to address wide spaces. Don't forget that buckets and wading pools are a drowning risk. Empty small wading pools and buckets after each use and store empty buckets indoors. Rainy days might create a risk that you weren't thinking about. It's important to safely store chemicals and dangerous tools. Chemicals used around the garden can be dangerous, not only to a child, but also a parent using them. Just like the poisons in the house, keep gardening chemicals locked up and out of reach. With warm days and grilling, there are multiple burn risks in the great outdoors. Ensure children wear shoes to protect their little feet and avoid letting them crawl on decks. The surface can be extremely hot, especially composite deck materials. When grilling, never leave a hot grill unattended. Remember, both the grill and any charcoal stay hot for quite a long time. Objects in the lawn, such as twigs, rocks, etc., may become projectiles or adults might not see a toddler approach them when mowing, exposing them to blades or other lawnmower hazards. Do not let children ride with you on the lawn. Thousands of children are killed or seriously injured because a driver backing up didn't see them. A backover incident typically takes place when a car is backing out of a driveway or parking space. All vehicles have blind zones, so if a young toddler wanders in front of or behind your SUV, you might not see them. Rear view cameras can be installed on any vehicle to assist drivers and prevent tragedies. However, it is always best to do a circle check before you even get into your car. When kids are outdoors, it's important to protect their skin, to prevent skin melanoma, as well as damage from too much sun exposure. We all need some sun exposure. When skin is exposed to the sun, our bodies make vitamin D, which helps the body absorb calcium for stronger, healthier bones. It only takes a little time in the sun for most people to get the vitamin D they need. Too much unprotected exposure to the sun's ultraviolet rays can cause skin damage, eye damage, immune system suppression, and skin cancer. The sun radiates light to the earth, and part of that light consists of invisible UV rays. When these rays reach the skin, they cause tanning, burning, and other skin damage. UV rays cause skin aging and wrinkling and contribute to skin cancer 
such as melanoma. UVA rays pass easily through the ozone layer, so they make up the majority of our sun exposure. UVB rays are also dangerous, causing sunburns, cataracts, and effects on the immune system. They also contribute to skin cancer, and melanoma is thought to be associated with severe UVB sunburns before the age of 20. UV rays react with a chemical called melanin that's found in the skin. A sunburn develops when the amount of UV exposure is greater than what can be protected against by the skin's melanin. The risk of damage increases with the amount and intensity of exposure. A tan is itself a sign of skin damage and does not help protect the skin. Every child needs sun protection. The lighter someone's natural skin color, the less melanin it has to absorb UV rays and protect itself. The darker a person's natural skin color, the more melanin it has, but both dark and light-skinned kids need protection from UV rays because any tanning or burning causes skin damage. Here are some key ways to protect your child's skin. It is recommended that all kids, regardless of their skin tone, wear sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or higher. Whatever sunscreen you choose, make sure it's a broad spectrum, which means it protects against both UVA and UVB rays, and if kids are in or near water, is labeled water resistant. Apply a generous amount and reapply often. Try to stay in the shade when the sun is at its strongest, usually from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. If kids are in the sun during this time, apply and reapply sunscreen, even if they're just playing in the backyard. Most sun damage happens from exposure during day-to-day -day activities, not from being at the beach. Remember that even on cloudy, cool, or overcast days, UV rays still reach the earth. This invisible sun can cause unexpected sunburn and skin damage. One of the best ways to protect skin is to cover up. To make sure clothes offer enough protection, put your hand inside the garment to make sure you can't see through it. Babies have thinner skin and underdeveloped melanin, so their skin burns easily. The best protection for babies is to keep them as clothed as possible. It is not recommended that you apply sunscreen to babies six months of age or younger. You want to make sure you include hats with wide brims to shadow their face. Even older kids need to escape the sun. For outdoor events, bring along a wide umbrella or a pop-up tent to play in. If it's not too hot outside and won't make kids even more uncomfortable, have them wear light long-sleeved shirts and or long pants. Sun exposure damages the eyes as well as the skin. Even one day in the sun can lead to a burned cornea. Sun exposure over time can cause cataracts later in life. The best way to protect eyes is to wear sunglasses that provide 100% UV protection. Pick, let kids pick their own pair. Many options are fun with multicolored frames or cartoon characters. Some medicines make skin more sensitive to UV rays. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if any prescription has specially antibiotics and acne medicines and over-the-counter medicines your kids take can increase sun sensitivity. If so, take extra sun precautions. The best protection is simply covering up or staying indoors. Even sunscreen can't always protect skin from sun sensitivity. When kids get sunburned, they usually have pain and a sensation of heat, symptoms that tend to get worse several hours after sun exposure. Some also get chills. Because the sun has dried their skin, it, become, it can become itchy and tight. Sunburned skin begins to peel about a week after the sunburn. Encourage your child not to scratch or peel off loose skin because skin underneath the sunburn is at risk for infection. To treat a sunburn, 
Have your child take a cool, not cold bath, or gently apply cool, wet compresses to the skin to help ease pain and heat. Apply pure aloe vera gel to any sunburned areas. Give your child an anti-inflammatory medication like ibuprofen or use acetaminophen to ease the pain and itching. Do not give aspirin to children or teens. Apply moisturizing cream to rehydrate the skin and treat itching. For the more seriously sunburned areas in kids over two years old, apply a thin layer of 1% hydrocortisone cream to help with pain. Do not use petroleum-based products such as Vaseline because they prevent excess heat and sweat from escaping. Also, avoid first aid products that contain benzocaine, which may cause skin irritation or allergy. If the sunburn is severe and blisters develop, call your family doctor. Tell your child not to scratch, pop, or squeeze the blisters because they can become infected and cause scarring. Keep your child out of the sun until the sunburn is healed. Any further sun exposure will only make the burn worse and increase the pain. Did you know it's the law in Ontario for children and adolescents under 18 years of age to wear an approved bicycle helmet? Be a good role model. Wear your helmet when you ride your bike. The human skull is just three pennies thick. A properly fitted helmet can reduce the risk of serious head injury by up to 85. A properly fitted helmet can reduce the risk of serious head injury by up to 85%. Helmets are designed to absorb the force from a crash or fall. This means that four out of five brain injuries could be prevented if every cyclist wore a helmet. Outdoor play is critical to a child's health and well-being, but the amount of time children spend outside has been steadily declining as children spend more and more time indoors, especially in front of digital screens. When children don't spend enough time outdoors, they miss out on important developmental and health benefits. Many parents agree it's important for children to play outside, and they're correct. Being outdoors, especially engaged in unstructured play, provides children with significant health and developmental benefits. However, many parents worry about sending children outside because there are inherent risks to outdoor play. It's important for parents to find a balance that keeps children safe while still allowing them to achieve the benefits of playing outside. While there is ample evidence of the benefits of outdoor play, it's normal for you to worry about your child's safety. You won't be able to watch them every minute of every day, so what's important is recognizing the potential risks so you can minimize the ones that could turn outdoor play into something harmful rather than something helpful. Unintentional injuries are the most common cause of hospital visits among young children. You may not be able to prevent every injury, but there are some things you can be aware of and steps you can take to reduce the risk of severe harm. Some spaces in the backyard, such as tool sheds, garages, or barns used to store tools and chemicals can and should be closed off and locked away from young children's reach. Even though these rooms may be locked, caregivers should make certain that hazardous items are out of reach. Even if a child cannot enter this space alone, they will still want to follow their special adult to help them do grown-up things when these spaces are opened. Accidents can occur quickly when children are involved. Poisonous chemicals such as motor oil, antifreeze, pesticides, fertilizers, gasoline, and kerosene should be stored in their original containers and with their original labels. For maximum safety, such chemicals should be locked up even within the locked shed or garage. Electric tools should be inspected regularly 
to make sure that they are in working order and do not have fraying electrical cords or broken plugs. Such tools should be unplugged and stored out of reach when not in use. Tools should not be used at all while young children are present. As well, young children or pets should not be allowed to play in the garage area when adults are draining toxic fluids from a car or other engine. For example, changing oil or antifreeze. Objects that could create an entrapment hazard, such as old refrigerators, should be removed from the property as soon as possible. If old refrigerators must be stored for any length of time, they should be stored with the doors removed. Caregivers should also take extra precautions when doing lawn work around children. Babies and young children should not be outside while an adult mows the lawn. Children should never ride on the lawnmower with an adult. While doing other yard work activities, caregivers should make sure that children are not in the way of any flying debris. Do not try to operate or play with dangerous tools, whether that be electrical or mechanical, and cannot access any poisons. Adults also need to take precautions with a family barbecue, grill, or outdoor fireplace. Young children should be constantly monitored when near these heat sources and should not be allowed to get too close to them. Many caregivers install sandboxes and playground equipment sets on their properties to increase the amount of fun their kids can have. Ready access to playground equipment is a wonderful thing to provide for children, but it does come with dangers. Concerned caregivers can take some simple precautions to help lessen the risks associated with such equipment. The first key to a safe playground is selecting an appropriate and safe area in which to place the equipment. Select a spot that is flat and level which will drain water well and not become muddy. Stationary equipment components should be placed within a selected field so that they're at least 6 to 8 feet away from one another. If swings are installed separately from the other equipment, they should be placed at least 20 feet away from walls so that children cannot fly off the swings into them. Once the space is selected, it should be prepared to create a softer landing place for potential falls and accidents. Gravel and blacktop are not appropriate for a playground, and even grass isn't a very good solution, because normal wear and tear will create bald and compacted hard spots in the soil. Caregivers should cover the play area with a rubber or synthetic mat or with sand, wood chips, or loose rubber bits in an adequate area around all play equipment. Follow manufacturer's guidelines about how far to extend the play mat around the equipment. The next step in ensuring a safe playground consists of selecting equipment that is designed for your child's age and size. While buying larger, more complex playground equipment may seem like a good investment that children can grow into, such equipment may actually set up a hazardous situation. Instead, select equipment best suited for your child's present stage of development and then build on that basic equipment purchased as your child grows. When purchasing playground equipment, make sure that it meets the local playground safety standards. When installing the equipment, caregivers should make sure that they read and follow all manufacturer's instructions to ensure that the equipment is properly placed, anchored, assembled, and padded. For home sandboxes, caregivers should help keep the space as hygienic as possible. Silica-based beach sand is a safe choice for sandboxes. Limestone-based sand may contain asbestos, which is harmful to children's lungs. When not in use, sandboxes should be tightly covered to prevent pets and wild critters from using it as a litter box. As children grow, they should be taught rules for playing safely on playground equipment and with other children. Playground safety ultimately comes down to helping children make wise and thoughtful choices about how to use the available equipment. All adult efforts at creating a safe play area will be for nothing if children make poor or dangerous choices while playing. It is imperative for caregivers to teach their children how to play safely. It's a wonderful opportunity for adults to model 
and to teach good decision making. Close adult supervision to enforce playground rules is also required. It's not always easy to talk to your child about safety. A child's developing brain doesn't always understand risk or danger the same way that you do, so just telling them that something is dangerous may not be enough. At the same time, you don't want to approach a topic in a way that scares your child or causes unnecessary anxiety. Talk to your children using simple language and without trying to scare them. You can make reference to other safety measures like seat belts to make the conversation feel more normal. Let your child ask questions and frame your answers in small, digestible pieces. Again, I know this is a lot of information to take in all at once, so I do hope you'll refer back to this video as you spend more time outdoors. If you have any questions and or concerns, please feel free to connect with us through our Facebook page at Nawasa Cap C CPNP Brantford or directly through email, text message, or phone call. You can also check out a number of our other videos on our YouTube channel at Nawasa Hamilton. Keep an eye out for next month's calendar and more information about our water safety video. Until then, Ona!